Lady Grey. People claim that they've seen your spirit. People claim that they've felt your spirit in this room. Would you like to come and make me aware of your presence, please? Somebody with me out here. This is possibly the most haunted castle in Britain. Chillingham Castle. And tonight, we're sleeping in there. If you are deeply into the paranormal, you'll no doubt have heard of the many stories about Chillingham Castle and its reputation for being the most haunted place in Britain. Most of these stories are already out there, given this place has been visited by so many TV shows and content creators. However, Chillingham is local to me, and I've investigated it many times, so I'm going to add a few more local tales out there that I've heard about. Originally built as a monastery in the 1100s, Chillingham would later become a fortified castle, completed in 1344. It is located in a stronghold area of North Northumberland during the many battles between the English and the Scots. Chillingham has royal connections. Edward I stayed here several times, and his room is still visible at the castle today. After he learned of an English defeat to the Scots at the Battle of Stirling Bridge, he headed to Northern England to defeat William Wallace's Scottish army. He stayed at Chillingham shortly before what would become known as the Battle of Falkirk, in which he won. Edward's ruthless approach and trail of destruction later gave him the nickname the Hammer of the Scots. One popular belief is that Edward discovered the location of the Scottish army by torturing a Scottish soldier here at Chillingham. And this bears another legendary figure, John Sage. Nobody can prove whether he really existed, but he is said to have been a man in charge of torturing here at the castle. A former soldier himself and loyal to the king, he injured his legs so badly from a Scottish arrow in battle that he was unable to serve so instead took up a non-fighting role in Edward's regime. Legends say as many as 50 Scottish prisoners would arrive at Chillingham each week, having been captured for interrogation. Their markings are still visible in the dungeon's stone walls today. After the prisoners were no longer needed, Sage is said to have had them massacred in Chillingham's courtyard, which now has a false stone floor, hiding the original courtyard. Some legends claim that children were forced to watch their parents die before being massacred inside and used for fun. I must stress these are stories and I cannot verify them as being definitely true, although we do know that the dungeon and the torture chamber were used. People claim to see shadows moving around the courtyard, and since 2019, staff working at the castle have reported seeing a large, tall shadow figure moving between two doorways at the back of this area. Nobody knows for sure who he is. John Sage met his end after he accidentally killed his lover, Elizabeth Charlton, on a torture device whilst they were having sex. Elizabeth's father, a border weaver, found out and demanded that Sage was handed over, to which he was, to avoid any fallout. His body was left on display, close to the castle hanging from a tree, and his ghost is said to haunt the area, dragging one foot behind. The original torture chamber at Chillingham is no longer accessible. The entrance has been bricked up behind this fireplace by the Tankerville family who once owned the castle in order to hide its dark past. But instead, a display of replica items in an old storage area is now used as a makeshift torture chamber. The hanging trees around Chillingham take their name from their use to hang dead bodies as a chilling warning to any approaching army. There is also stories of monks from the monastery being hanged here after being caught taking down Scottish bodies in order to give them a Christian burial. This sign of empathy to the enemy was not welcomed 
by John Sage. Even today, bones are being found in this area, shadow figures hanging from the trees and voices, flashing lights have all been witnessed here. And this by Dead Air ourselves back in 2016 when we did a live radio show. We've amplified this piece of audio, but myself, Chris Felton and his partner Angela can clearly hear what we can only describe as harp music coming from the monastery area of the woods. Love the history, love the stories. Anyway, oh, music. I can hear music. I can hear music. This is amazing. Listen, I can hear. People claim to experience disembodied voices inside the main hallway, an area where soldiers would once walk through to reach their accommodation. Inside the small chapel, the spirit of a young girl called Eleanor has been reported. Her story is vague. She was a Scottish child killed whilst hiding here, but skeletal remains found below the floor may add more to this story. When I was 17, I did a ghost tour of the castle, and 12 people in this room witnessed a thick curtain moving, as if someone behind it was pushing their hand through. This lasted a couple of minutes, but there was nobody behind it. Today, a very cold spot is often felt in this room. The minstrel's gallery was once an outside wall of the castle, and it is said to have harboured the emotions of those left hanging from this very wall. This is the still room. It is known for its display of letters from people who have returned items back to the castle that they have stolen, and have claimed it has brought them bad luck. One ghost story from this room tells of a guard who saw a woman enter and beg for a drink. He claimed she looked worn out. When he turned round, she had vanished, and he realised that the castle was locked up. The still room is next to the dungeon where Scottish prisoners were kept. I'm filming general daytime stock footage to be used in this video. I hear a faint knock, and then a door opens. This can easily be put down to being the wind, but as you can see, there's not even enough draft to move this flag at the top of the building, and the nearest outside door is to the courtyard which is shielded from the wind. The dungeon can squeeze up to 15 people inside it until it was time to be tortured or dropped into an oubliette to die. This is the main epicentre of paranormal activity. F.C. graffitied in the stone is believed to be that of Fabian, a man held here for allowing a royal horse to escape. Chillingham's most famous ghost is that of the blue boy in the pink room. People would report seeing a figure with blue flashes of light around it before vanishing. Many years ago, a fireplace was being constructed and the skeleton of a young boy was found with blue material around his bones. He was buried nearby in a graveyard and the hauntings have since stopped. This area is private residency of Sir Humphrey Wakefield. I'm staying in the Grey apartment, named after the family who once lived here. Lady Grey, also known as Lady Mary Berkeley, is said to haunt this area. She was jilted by her husband who ran off with her own sister, Lady Barclay of Barclay Castle. However, Lady Grey never got over this and tried to take him to court, which was seen over by the infamous Judge Jeffreys. Lady Grey ended up spending most of her days alone in this part of the castle and in this very quarter to bring up her young daughter. Interestingly, my bedroom backs onto the wall where the blue boy was found. So this is my apartment. This is the Grey apartment. 
Between filming, I sent this mobile video over Facebook to a friend, showing off how amazing the apartment is. I then head out to do some filming outside, but when I returned, I find a cupboard door is open. Bedroom. Lady, Lady Grey's bedroom. View out the window. Little bath behind this screen. And then, okay, um, I've been out, I've come back. Check the video I sent earlier. That was not open, was it? This was not open. It's a cupboard. It's just opened. I've been out. I've not been... There's nothing in it, but it's open. I've not... Literally, it was not open before. I was lucky to have filmed this mobile video beforehand, so I could have seen that this door was not open before. I'm not the only person to have had this happen in the grey apartment. It gets dark. The castle's owner is away for the week and the only other guests booked have cancelled due to someone catching COVID. This leaves me in a rare position where I've got the entire castle to myself. Please like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel if you haven't done so already. We've got plenty of investigations on there and lots more to come. Also, give us a follow on our official Instagram channel for behind the scenes photos. But first, I'm going to show you the lake behind Chillingham Castle. So you join me out here in the grounds, just not far from Chillingham really. We're kind of in the middle of the sticks. But I'm going to take you to a place that not many ghost hunters or people who've been here and investigated this place will tell you about. It's a secret little spot, but it's got some cracking stories to it. And I'll tell you about those when we get there. So I'm just going to put the light on full IR infrared. Now we are going to encounter wildlife out here. I don't know what. We've already met a little badger trying to dig up the turf here at Chillingham. But I'm going to take you out to the lake. See a little fence there. I'm in total darkness, by the way. Complete and utter darkness out here. I'm using the IR light on the camera to see. But I'm taking you to the lake of Chillingham because that has got some cracking stories. And the problem is people buy tickets to come on ghost hunts and come out here. But obviously the ghost hunt isn't gonna take you all the way out here, this little walk. You're just gonna stay in the castle and maybe do the, the lawn and the grounds around it. But this place has got some stories. Oh, we're gonna disturb all kinds of wildlife out here. Oh dear God. <laughs> So this lake has so many stories. People apparently drowned in this lake. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> We're going to get a few shocks out here tonight. But the most commonly told story comes from the time when Scottish prisoners were kept here at Chillingham. Oh, Jesus. What did they do with children when they would capture villagers? And they would take people prisoner. Well, remember the torture chamber? Shut up. Remember the torture chamber I showed you at the start of the video? And that babble with all the nails hammered into it. Well, that's where the children went. But they wouldn't torture the children in the torture chamber at Chillingham. 
they would do it out here. I'm going to show you exactly what they did. In the distance you can hear the Chillingham cattle making new calves. Down by this lake there is a hill and I don't know which hill it is. But I know it's a hill, a steep hill. They would take two children and two barrels with nails hammered into the side. They would stuff the child into each barrel, put the lid on, and then roll them down the hill and race them. The barrel that got to the bottom first one, and obviously the little Scottish child inside would probably be dead. <laughs> Those nails would go straight through the skull and batter them they would bleed to death probably thousands of puncture wounds all over the body and that's why people see children out here and the sound of running water means we're not a million miles away in fact you can probably see it or hear it just over there now there's a way down I do not know where the hill that they did this from and several historians have looked into this whether it's true or not we don't know but it's a well known myth but also there's a legend as well that if you put your hand into this lake at night like where we are now the spirits will reach up and grab it how do I get down? There was a way. I've been down here this afternoon in the daylight. There was a little path down here. I'm trying to see on the, the smallest little screen. Is that it? It's, oh, it doesn't look, look at this tree. Look how wide and thick that tree is. That's a good edge. Yeah. Let's go down. Was it this hill? Was it something like this? Where they would push a bowel down. Obviously it's overgrown since. Let's try and get down. I can tell you from first hand experience this is a steep hill. So you would probably come flying down here. Now I'm not saying this is exactly where they did it. Oh, I think we've got fish. People do come and fish yet. I'm on a little wooden platform, which I don't think is very stable. But there you can see the surface of the water. How peaceful and tranquil it is out here. Oh, dear me. Dear me, I think we're going to have some calves early this year. And that's it. I mean, splashes, but I'm thinking that's probably just fish. This place gets filled up and people can pay and come and, and fish here. And I don't think that's a very big hill. I doubt that's very much. The one they would use, it might have been further round. Oh, a bat's just flown between me and that tree. And that cow in the distance sounds like it's having a good time. But I thought I'd tell you the story. People see stuff out here all the time. If you're ever in the Chillingham area, you will know the visitors car park as you come down the driveway. Well, I can tell you. People see kids around there a lot. As we are about to strike midnight any time, so you will hear some chimes going very shortly. If I'm still recording then. 
But the ghost stories around here are two little children seen around the grounds of Chillingham. Were they Scottish children who were captured by the English? And a little seat with a nice view out of a Chillingham Lake. Two children seen. They've been seen all over the castle grounds and all over these woods. Um, people see them in the apartments when they're staying over. They look down into the into the oh the bloody bat. I don't like bats, although I know it's not going to hit me because they're, they're very accurate. And as I head back, I'm quite aware I'm going to bump into our noisy little friend again. He's going to probably shout at me from the tree. But children are regularly seen out here at Chillingham. This is one of the places that not many people will take you to, not many people who've ghost hunted here come out this far. But if you listen to the historians, the Richard Felixes, and you watch his DVDs that he's done on this place, he's found yeah, cows. He's found documentation that that's what the English did to the Scots. It's barbaric, isn't it? Putting a child in a, a torture contraption and doing that for sport. <laughs> I'm walking up what was traditionally known as the Devil's Mile. Those that have ever been to Chillingham Castle will simply know it as um, the main roadway into the castle, the main driveway. That's where I'm going to show you now. And I'll tell you why it got the name the Devil's... Jeez. All sorts of wildlife out here. Why it got the name the Devil's Mile. So you can't really see much. This is the driveway into Chillingham. Now, those that have been here before will tell you straight away, well, it's not a mile. It's maybe a quarter of a mile at most. But that's because Chillingham used to be a lot bigger, the estate. This path, if you look at it on on maps, this pathway, you get to the gates right at the far side there, but then the same straight line carries on straight on at the crossroads for another, well, all the way up until exactly a mile. That's why it was called the Devil's Mile. Now we talked about Edward I being here and the border skirmishes and battles between the English and the Scots, and a lot of the Scots were taken here to Chillingham and were kept prisoner and were killed here. We know that fact. It happened. But what they then, then did to try and deter people from attacking, invading, breaking in, or even just coming here to get their revenge on the English, they would take some of the Scots who'd been executed and they would hang the bodies on trees lining this road going up for a mile from the actual castle itself you'd find bodies imagine coming to invade this place and you'd see your own just dangling from a tree dead that was there to put you off keep you away from this place it's no wonder why out here so often people claim to see dark shadows there's a burial ground that they believe is in the woods we're going to go to next. This is wildlife. They still think they find bones. Remember these people didn't get buried properly in a in a proper graveyard. They were just hung out here and they'd disintegrate, they'd decompose out here. The bones would just get buried in the mud. And that's where we're going to go next the infamous hanging trees of Chillingham. Now this is often regularly disputed. I mean, I grew up barely an hour away from Chillingham Castle, so it's in all the local books, all the local ghost books and um, 
So many TV shows have come and filmed here at Chillingham that all the stories are, I've heard them all. I've heard all the claims, all the historical claims. Back here, we did our radio show, Dead Air, in 2016. We were live from here. Myself, Chris Felton and his better half were out here. And it was about two o'clock in the morning. We just finished a ghost hunt with Chris Conway, who was at the time working as the medium on, on Most Haunted on Living TV. And we stood here and we could hear harp music, actual harp music, very faint coming from the trees. And if you know Chillingham and you know the local area around here, you will know that there are no villages. You don't even get a phone signal for six miles from this castle. That's why you don't get the live streamers popping up here. There we go. I mentioned the chimes were starting to go off soon. There'll be 11 of them for 11 p.m. to that old. Old van. Like I say, we've got Chillingham Castle to ourselves tonight. Come and join me. I'll be going inside in a bit, but I'm going to show you the hanging tree. Or the hanging trees. Again, some people dispute this as a historical fact. Some people say that the Scots would never be executed on a side of the building that would face Scotland. They would be executed on the southern side, which would in indicate the story up by up by the the lake has been more accurate. You can see Chillingham Castle with some lights on. That's uh, my apartment tonight. I am the only person in one of the courtyard apartments, so we've got it. We know if there's footsteps above us or noises around the courtyard, it's nobody else. We should be down here. It's going to be an active night, I know it. Chillingham always is. We always get stuff at Chillingham. We've been here so many times with the Dead Eye radio show. Look at the castle. With those lights on. That's my apartment on that middle floor. Now it should be around here somewhere. Oh, I need to find this in the dark. It's all right in the daytime. But dark, it's a nightmare to find. Now there should be a little inlet here somewhere. Is that it? Here we go. This is it. The hanging trees of Chillingham. Now, oh, there we go. Look at that. That's a very, very old tree. Now, this is where so many dark shadows get seen. Children as well out here. Now, we know that children used to climb up and steal things from bodies. Now, I'm going to try and get underneath this tree that's Falling over. I wouldn't be surprised if I disturb a bit of wildlife out here too. Nobody really knows which exact tree with the hanging trees. People claim they know, but this was hundreds of years ago. Nobody's alive to tell the tale. So any spirits out here with me? It's another one of Chillingham's cows getting off. Look at that, another tree's down. Was this a hanging tree? So at the start of the video, remember I told you about monks that would be based out here. This was once a monastery. Monks were caught trying to free prisoners they saw hanging. They didn't want to say it. They were very religious, they were deeply against the idea of people being killed 
when the English saw the monks doing that, they decided they would capture those monks and hang them instead, or as well. Is there anybody with me tonight? Were you hanged? Were you a monk? Making noise? in the distance, might be real people, I don't know, shouldn't be. Not seen any torches. Hello? Somebody with me out here. Can you whistle? It's very frustrating that the mic hasn't really picked up what I could hear, but I could swear I could hear a man and a woman talking faintly in the distance, which isn't unusual because people do book these rooms out and come ghost hunting up here. But I didn't see any torchlight after I did a full sweep of the area. This is the same part where we heard the faint music back in 2016. Were you a monk? Making noise? Might be real people, I don't know. Shouldn't be. There's no, if there was people out here, you would see torches. I could hear like two people talking, like a man and a woman. That was strange. I'm going to show you around here the entrance to the monastery. where we may believe a lot of the executed victims were put. This is the old entrance to the old monastery where monks would have come in and out of. Look at that. Still very much visible in 2021. See more recent edition. Is there anybody here with me? Can you show yourself in the form of a dark figure? Some kind of silhouette? People see figures hanging from trees out here. I see we're hearing little bits of wildlife. Is 
the other entrance into Chillingham Castle. Something to the right. Is it a mouse or some sort of little... Something standing around here. Hello? Can't see it. I think it's getting a bit cold out here tonight. Let's head inside and let's find out what Chillingham Castle is really going to give us. I decided to focus my investigation in an area around Chillingham's dungeon and still room. I've made my way into the still room which if you were watching earlier in the video you would have seen we had um, a little bit of activity, shall we say. So this is obviously going to be a place where I'm going to try and see if I can pick anything up. This is a room that's very historical in terms of sightings in this room. Let's see what we can get. First thing that's worth mentioning, you're obviously going to hear the ticking clock. You can see the time in there. We are after 1am in the morning. I just want to show you all these letters over here. Now these have been here for years, but these are objects that people have stolen from this beautiful castle. And every single one of these is a letter that somebody, and these are only the ones that are on display, there are other ones that are stashed away in folders. These are just the, the well-known ones and the objects that have obviously been returned. People have stolen these, they've taken these items from this castle, had what they believe is bad luck, and returned them back to the castle. And they've blamed this lady, known as the Spanish Witch, for the curse of Chillingham. Let's just have a look at some of these. We've got, as you can see, coins, all sorts. Down here, a bell that's a bit fractured. Acorns. Um, all sorts of objects down here. Don't even know what that is. Let's just have a look at some of them. I don't know if you can you can read that. Please find an enclosed item that was removed by accident. And then it was a doorknob. And I've had bad luck ever since. You can't really see that on the infrared. But that's the item. Someone's obviously taken it. I know some of these aren't turning up on infrared. That's a photograph. Um, you can't really see, here's one uh, Dear Spanish Lady of Chillingham Castle whose portrait hangs on the, the still room or chill room I am writing to beg for your forgiveness and will explain why in this letter and they go on to explain I've been a few times to the castle but when my husband and I came and stayed over in the castle in September 2018 we were I think that says we, I don't know what that says, when we headed back to the car park and decided to pick up a handful of fallen things for our wood burner in the van. The minute we drove off the castle grounds, the car van broke down and the car was just, would just start out of, that was just the start of our problems. And they go on to talk about it, I won't show you the name of the person. Every single one of these letters is something similar. They've taken objects and things happen to them. They've had absolute bad luck. So the moral of the story is don't steal. Do not steal from this castle. I know people go to hotels and they'll nick things like towels and little shampoo bottles, but don't do it. Don't do it at Chillingham. Right, I'm going to show you this bit. Spirit, can you open that door? Like what you did this morning. When I was in here filming. Just open it. Is 
Can you just make it open maybe an inch? It was fantastic what you did. I got it on camera. Can you do it again? I don't know if you're camera shy. There is a story of a guard, presumably guarding the dungeon. And a woman walked in here, asked for some water, asked for a drink. And when he turned around, she was gone. Some believe she was a lady who was poisoned at this castle. If you would like a drink. If you would, let me know. I've got some drink upstairs. Not an alcoholic. But you can have some. Can you make a noise in this room? Can you make a tap or a bang? Oh, I think something's just moved past. Is that an orb? Oh, I think something's just moved past. Is that an orb? I saw something on the screen. I'll have to look at it when I go into post edit later on. You're a spirit and you can hear me. You can understand me. Can you communicate with me? This beautiful castle that so many people want to come and visit and do ghost hunts in and see you. People want to just know what you look like. Click. Oh, we're getting an EM. We're getting an EMF. Hang on. If that was you, can you come closer to me? Look at the EMF meter. Look at this grey box in my hand. Put your energy into it. It's coming from over here. When you listen back, you can hear the click that I could hear. Also, when amplifying this piece of audio, I can hear footsteps walking on the wooden floor. Put your energy into it. I decide to have a break upstairs whilst I try to ponder how I can try to summon the spirit of a thirsty Scottish ghost. been taken in here. I've been told this is a very old door, quite possibly an original door leading down and yes, we're going to have to mind our heads a little bit of a step as well when we go inside the dungeon. Oh wow, it's so dark in here. I can't even see where I am. I'm going to close this door so I am completely alone. That's not shut. There we go. Now, oh, can I get some sort of light in here just to see where I am? Because I can't really see. If I'm going to bang my head on the. There we go. This is one of the horriblest, most horrible places you will go and I've been in here lots of times over the years with ghost hunting this is it, look at this door let's just get inside and I'll close it up oh, oh it's not even Open this shut. It's a very old wooden door. And there we go. Let's just get inside. No, I'm holding it very straight, the camera. I can turn the light off now. 
There we go. I am inside the dungeon of Chillingham Castle, completely by myself. Now I talked earlier about prisoners that would either be tortured or dropped down here. Now it's got a grate on it now, so you can't fall down for health and safety. But that's where they would go and just down there, I don't know if you can see it, I'm going to try and zoom in, it goes a long way down, but you can see bones down there, and that is the oubliette. Now, look at this door, I'm sure you it's got original graffiti on it, people counting down days, counting how many days they've been in here for. If I told you, this is not a big space, let me zoom out, one, two, three, these aren't proper strides because the, the floor is so uneven in here, but this is, let me just put my phone down somewhere. Castle's dungeon. Let's just have a little look at the ceiling you've got. The larches going up. And I don't think that's leading you to anywhere. I think that's all blocked up now. But yeah. Fifteen people would be contained in here. Fifteen! If there was five in here, I'd say, it would be too busy. Fifteen. And they were all held in here against their will. Probably all Scottish. Or anyone that was seen as being a traitor or sympathetic to the Scots. They were kept in this terrible room. Let me just have a look at some of the graffiti on this wall. Look at that. Just think of the person who carved this to this stone look look at that witch sign and it goes deep into the stone that's incredible that's incredible the fact that they were able to chisel and get their initials in there and I'm just, I feel like by Touching that I'm connecting. Look, there's someone who's they've been counting days. I think they've been counting the days to when they've how long they've been in here for. Imagine that. Imagine being in here for more than. I mean, I'm planning to spend about maybe 20, 30 minutes in here. But imagine being in here for so long that you had to count your days. How would they even know when a full day was? We just have to wait till the sunrise rose. Oh, I saw an orb. Thank you if that was a spirit. Can you do that again? Can you come and, sh and show yourself to me? started feeling a little bit sickly. You can hear my tummy going. Just taking some, some breaths. It's just an unpleasant feeling in here. I don't think it's the... I don't usually get affected by things in places, but... How many bodies went through here? It's horrible. They probably would have had a bucket for the toilet. 15 people taking it in turns to go. I'm going to just ask out a few questions and see what we get. It's just 
say on behalf of myself being English I would like to apologize for the way you've been treated it was horrible what we did the way we massacred your people and I'm deeply sorry about that and I hope that you've forgiven us if you can let me know that you're listening to me can you make a noise in here make a, a tap like a sound on the wall a very strange not sick sickly but just a weird feeling so I'm going to use a spirit box and use the session and we're going to ask see if we can make contact with anything in here tonight and I've rested the aerial against the stone people believe in the stone tape theory is there anybody with me here tonight? In Chillingham Castle? Can you say your name? Who are you? Oh, I can hear it, it's talking. Say your name, please. Can you say hello? Did you die here in this dungeon? Can you speak slowly and clearly? What is your name? No distinct voices came through on the spirit box, but I had to turn it off when I started to feel a bit funny. I'm just... I've hit a wall. A strange wall in this dungeon. I've been in here for nearly 30 minutes. I just feel a bit sickly, but we're gonna, we're gonna go through this. We've only got chilling in for one night. I'm not gonna waste it. I'm going to battle through this and we didn't get much on the spirit box but we're going to try and use a voice bank so let's go can you talk to me can you say hello what is my name what is your name Are you, are you Scottish? Did you die here? Oh. Are you making me feel sick? people are there here? It's just ten. Can one of you come forward and speak? Just one at a time. Now I've gone really cold in here. I'm literally freezing cold in here. It's gone so cold. And I'm... Can the first person talk please? First person. What is your name? Are you all men? Can 
Did any of you write your names on the wall? Do you hate the English? I am English. But I am very sorry for the way we have treated you. type of things. It's just a strange feeling of being tired and faint and sickly at the same time. I never get affected by these kind of things. fresh air and then come back. This feeling gets worse until I am outside of the dungeon and the video also shows me sweating despite it being late at night and quite cool in the castle. I head to the chapel with the thermal imaging camera to see if I can see the cold spots that people have claimed to be that of a young child but I cannot capture anything unusual. I decide to use the SLS camera. Okay I'm using the SLS camera as you can see, this camera can fire lots of little infrared lights that you can only see. I can't see them, only through the screen. You can see them at home. But to my naked eye, it's just a dark room. Um, but the infrared lights that the infrared camera can see um, can map figures in the room. It's called Connect Technology. You'll probably have used it if you've got an Xbox. Let's have a little look. Now you can see what... What I can see on my screen as it's mapping, it is looking for figures in the room. Let's see if we can find what is here in the still room. Spirit, can you come and interact? Can you sit in front of me or stand in front of me? Are you sitting in one of these chairs? see spirits in here. People do see them. Let's map it over the chair. It's currently not mapping anything. A lot of people think that the SLS just accidentally picks objects up. As you can see, that thing there, I suppose it could look like a human. It's got the human shoulders, but it knows it's not. It's not going to stick figure it. Let's take it down to the oubliette. Are you next to that door? The door that you... Opened earlier on this afternoon. That was me kicking a chair. slowly because it's not even and I'm in complete darkness. What's the camera saying? It's mapping. Let's just carry on going. Do not try
try this at home. Bring a torch with you. Here we go. I just did if you're on a ghost hunt. Spirit, are you in here? Were you a prisoner in this castle? You come and show yourself to me, and you stand in the doorway. Show me that you, you're really there. starting to get late so I decide to conclude my investigation in the grey apartment where this involves me walking through Chillingham's infamous courtyard. I've just come out into the courtyard here at Chillingham Castle. Let me tell you about some of the ghosts that get seen around these parts. Um, there's so many. Let me just turn the camera around. One of the entities that gets seen around here is what can only be described as a very large man. He's often seen walking from this doorway just in here across the back of there. We're going to have a little look at that in a second. Uh, he's often seen up in the Edward the First room, I've been told. Um, all I can say is he's described as a very large man. Big, tall, we're talking um, possibly up to seven foot in height. So we're going to have a little walk around. Um, there's so many ghosts here at Chillingham. Every single part of this castle seems to have a story. Now this is where he's seen to come out of this door. Nobody knows who he is. They believe he's possibly 1600s, given by his the dress that he has. But he walks out of here and he walks down here into this part of the castle. And then let me just show you where he goes, because we obviously can't go all of the way up. He walks up the tower, and people see him going up the stairs there. But he's been seen up in the, the King Edward the First room as well. It's just a shame nobody knows who he is, who his true identity is. Now, I'm staying up there. Complete darkness at the minute. We're going to go up there in just a bit. People often hear footsteps around here as well in the courtyard. Now this isn't the original courtyard. Let me just point something out to you. So I'm just going to stand back here. So you can see there's the famous inner courtyard stairs going up. They were originally on the back of the building. Now, let me just show you. This is not the real floor. This is a false floor. There was originally a deeper floor um, hundreds of years ago, possibly for um, death 
occurred out here we don't know all sorts but if you just come over here and I'll show you inside that's just cows outside I don't know if you can see down in there you can't really but it's a much lower floor and that was originally the the same uh, depth as this floor but this has been raised so for some reason we don't know why whether there's something below here it did it used to go further down let's have a little look around the back of here such a fantastic castle to come and visit so this man this shadowy figure this big dark figure often walks through here and then it goes into this door or through this door and then from there he goes up this courtyard is so famous you see it on most haunted you've seen it on other television shows this castle really is honestly spectacular and to have this all to myself tonight I've been so so lucky so fortunate it's a beautiful place these famous steps all the way up there and of course the cannons at the bottom people often hear things out here they see things out here but I'm going to show you where my apartment is tonight that's normally the way you would come in but we're closed you can't come in here now there we go that's where public would come in but this is closed off let's have a little look upstairs to the grey apartment where I'm sleeping tonight so we go up these little stairs up here For a little bit. So this is the apartment that's supposedly haunted by Lady Grey. So we've got this beautiful table, windows that look over the, the front lawn, which you can't see at the minute, it's dark outside. Good little clock somewhere in here, I can't remember where it is now. Over here, a nice little living area, a television, sofa, over there, and I want to show you this, guest book. These are people who stayed in here recently, look at that, um, I don't know if you can see that. I'll read it out to you. You can't really see it through the infrared. Heard a few strange noises and humming, but we slept peacefully. Love it here. There we go. People hear stuff in this in this apartment. I'll show you the bedrooms where I'll be well, the bedroom I'll be sleeping in tonight where we had some experiences earlier on. these steps. Now I showed you the cupboard. This is the, the bedroom. It's four post a bed. Straight ahead. That's the cupboard that was for whatever reason open when I came back. You can see over the courtyard through there. And then over here we've got this view, you won't be able to see it but over the hedges, the garden 
chilling in. We've got a little bath in here, which is sort of partitioned quite nicely by a little screen. And let me just walk you through Lady Grey's old apartment. That's a toilet in that door there. This is another bedroom. We've got two things. What's cold in here? Very cold in here. Now, I did mention the pink room. That backs onto this fireplace. Now we talked about the blue boy, the radiant blue boy. He was discovered on the other side of that wall, the legend goes. That they knocked through some brick, some stone, and they found the skeleton. He was found wearing some blue fabric material. And since he was given a consecrated burial, he was never seen haunting this place again. People have said they've seen blue flashes, blue sparks. Whether that's him or not, we don't know. But this is the apartment everybody wants to be in, just simply because of the hauntings, the strange sightings that people have and experiences in here. Okay, I'm asking for any spirits that are present with me in this grey apartment this evening to come forward let me know of your presence I ask that you do this peacefully and I mean you absolutely no harm Lady Grey people claim that they've seen your spirit People claim that they felt your spirit in this room. Would you like to come and make me aware of your presence, please? Not her fit. No. No. Lady Grey, if that was you, can you do that noise again? I'm just looking out the window and the sun is starting to come up. It's three o'clock in the morning when I'm filming this. Lady Grey. I'm, I've heard your story that your husband, your lover, walked away from you. It's horrible. Yeah. That, you can see the sun starting to come up. Why would he do that to you? It's horrible. Come and talk to me. Can you make me aware that you're here by making a tap? Did he go into the bedroom before and open up the cupboard? Was that you? I'm come and see if you're in the, the bedroom. Are you a dog? People have said that they felt a dog coming in here, sniffing your feet. It's walking very slowly because I'm in darkness. Do you see a flashing light there? I saw something flash.
Is that somebody trying to communicate with me? I mean, I'd love to see you, but I've got to sleep in here tonight. Are you a child? Are you the little boy that people see that was bricked up behind the fireplace on the other side of this wall? I'm in the grey room, but in the pink room on the other side of that wall they found your body. And people said that they've seen you flashlights, usually blue. You're the most famous ghost of Chillingham, you bring a lot of tourists in. Why don't you come and say hello to us? You make a bang, a tap. Was this your bedroom? Are you Lady Grey? Do you like people coming to stay in your bedroom? Lady Grey, I would love to see you. I can feel the temperature in this room has dropped dramatically. Can you show yourself to me? Come and stand in a, pl in a place where I can see you. Is there anybody in the fireplace? Can you make the cupboard door open again? Oh, hello. I just got a figure. Now it's trying to calibrate it. Hello? Okay, it's now half three in the morning. I've really got to get some sleep. I'm shattered. I've been here for 12, 14 hours. Getting loads of orbs, but that could very well be dust. That's my view. First time I've ever slept in a four poster bed. Getting loads of orbs in here. I've kept the door open as well. So if we do hear anything, we'll hear it as well. Oh, but I am 
very tired and I hope I have a nice and peaceful night's sleep. If not, the camera is just here. Over and out. Shillingham always provides great backdrops for investigations. I did capture small things, but I am gutted I didn't see the cupboard door in the grey apartment opening. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel for more content.